Hello, realities. Good morning to a brand new day. I so welcome you to another day of our touch point daily. Today being 25th of July 2023. Like we know, we do it, we pick up the topic and uh, discuss on it in the scriptures to understand God's mind in those areas towards us. Once again, my name is God Gift Austin, your regular host on this channel, and your anchor on Royal Crown Church of God. We have been talking about abstinence for the past two days, and today being 25th of July, we are still going to be deliberating on abstinence. In our last lesson, we are talking about how to respect or why should we abstain? We are still going to deliberate on why we should abstain. But uh, we concluded yesterday by saying that you need to respect your convert or people, respect their conscience by abstaining from certain things that might threaten them to go back doing what they are used to do before before them. So by you not taking, like using alcohol, for instance, and somebody who is recovering from alcohol is who has been drinking, for you not to drink in his presence is a respect to his conscience. So this morning, I want us to look at certain passages also in line with abstinence and why we should abstain. The Bible said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Praise the Lord. So these are the other things that we need to learn about abstinence. Do not conform to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is the word of God that does its transformation. But you must give yourself to God. If you don't give yourself to him, he will not do anything. He cannot force himself in you. He cannot impose himself on you. So it is not, oh, say, God, take me, God, take me. God cannot take you. You must give yourself to God. Yes. So abstinence is a self-discipline. If you don't discipline yourself to abstain from certain things, you will remain the way you are. You remain child. You will not grow. Praise the Lord. In James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father. Who created all the gifts, all the lights in the heavens? He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. Every good and perfect gift is from God. Amen. So we should desire the good and the perfect ones. In Matthew 7, verse 11, the Bible says, So if you if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give you good gifts? To those who ask of him. Without him, you can do nothing. Ask him to help you. You know, the Bible said, My grace is sufficient for you. So we all need God's grace to do God's will. Praise the Lord. When we allow our thoughts and lives to be directed by God's will rather than the world's way, you will grow to realize how good pleasing and perfect God desires are. Yes, he wants us to abstain from some enticing sins, but only so he can give us much better pleasure in return. God is the source of all good gifts. Amen. God is the source of all good gifts. And until we learn to discipline ourselves, we will not really assess some of the things that the Lord has preserved for us. Alright, so the next question in line is, from what should I abstain? Yes, you have seen the need to abstain. But the next is, 
Abstain from what? Let's look at some passages. In 1 John 5, verse 21, the Bible says, Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your heart. You have seen it. Abstain from anything that will take God's place in your heart. You know that more than I do. We are called to abstain from anyone or anything that replaces God as the first priority in our lives. God desires a heart totally devoted to him. He's a jealous God. He does not share that with any man. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 22, the Bible says, Stay away from every kind of what? Evil. In Psalm 119 verse 101, the Bible says, I have refused to walk on any evil path so that I may remain obedient to your word. Yes, that is David. That was David. In 1 Peter 2 verse 11, they all say, Dear friend, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wages war against your soul. Worldly desires that wages war against your soul. Keep away from them. So you are asking, what should I abstain from? Anything that replaces God in your life, anything that wages war against your soul, abstain from them. Disappear from them. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 and 8, the Bible says, So put to death the sinful earthly things looking with, locking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy for a greedy person is an idolater. Worshipping the things of this world, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, Malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Put them away. We live in a generation or in the days now where immorality is the order of the day. People play with it. People joke with it. People toy with it. They do it in the public without the fear of God. And Satan is clapping for them and saying, yeah, these are my members. It takes discipline to look at those things and look away. A lot of people don't understand the damage they are doing to their soul. But here is the word of God, which is in perfect law of liberty for us. It is our guideline, our book of life that shows us, tells us what to do. He said, what put to death the sinful and earthly things that are locking within your soul. He said, have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, especially sexual immorality. Have nothing to do with it. In Psalm 101 verse 4, the Bible says, I will reject uh, perverse idea, ideas and stay away from every evil. What else should we abstain from? Abstain from, from things, from sin as such, as much as humanly possible. From both sinful thought and actions, a heart that allows thought of evil, lust, anger, rage, or impunity, to linger is a heart that will draw you into greater sin. You must guard your heart with all diligence to abstain because what you take in determines how your life looks like. The truth is that out of the abundance of the heart, the man speaks. And can I tell you the truth? Your word, your utterance is build your word. So we must deliberately and consciously abstain so that we can have fulfilled life. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible says, God's will is for you to be holy. So stay away from all sexual sins. You see, the Bible is deliberate about talking about uh, sexual sins. If you have carnal knowledge with somebody who you are not legitimately married to, it's sinful. Yes, abstain from sexual sin both before marriage and after. This is essential in a marriage relationship where faithfulness and trust are critical to the bond of unity God intended between a husband and wife. Praise God. In Proverbs 14 verse 7, the Bible says, away from fools, for you won't, know, you won't find knowledge on their lips. Fools, they have nothing to offer. And the Bible says that, it's only a fool that says that there is no God. So it begins with somebody who doesn't believe in God. A foolish person does not believe in God. Anybody who doesn't believe in God is a foolish person. If you believe in God, you obey God. He lives his life to please God. 
In 2 Timothy 3, verse 5, Bible says, they will act religious, but what? They will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Their mouth does not synchronize with their hearts. They are saying differently, but they are doing differently. They are hypocrites. The Bible says, run away from them. The only way you identify them is at their foot. Yes, they are praising God before you, but when you they, they expose their fruit, you understand where their stand is. Praise the Lord. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. And most times, it's not the way they think that they talk. They say different things, they believe different things. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 22, 24 to 25, they also don't befriend angry people or associate with hot tempered people, or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul. It's so explicit, it's understandable. And this morning I want to encourage you. If you want God to help you to abstain, you have to begin a journey with Him. And if you want to do that, can we pray? And say, Father, have mercy on my soul. I surrender myself to you. Write my name in the book of life. Delete it from the book of death. I want to live for you alone. I want to serve you and know you better. Give me a fresh start. Give me a new beginning. Thank you because I am born again. Henceforth, Satan, you have no power over me. My life has been given to Christ. And he is the manager of my soul from today. Thank you, Father Almighty. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer, I want you to keep listening to our messages. Share with others because God has preserved the best for every one of us and we must not miss it. And until we meet next time, keep meditating on the word of God and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.